All right. Welcome or welcome back. If you are new, welcome. I'm glad you found us. I don't know how you found us, but I'm glad you did. If you are a regular, welcome back. Keep coming back. We can do this. Um, if it's years from today and you're looking at this, this is an artifact of our um, COVID-19. I, I, I didn't want to make videos, but I was forced to make videos. Um, an interesting thing about this is this class focuses on two-person techniques. We spend at least half the class time doing two-person techniques together. And that's what we've lost with um, this virus, right? But in a way, um, it's okay with these videos because when you go home to study, you're probably not going to have another person to practice with. So actually, if these videos survive when we go back to normal class uh, activities, <clears throat> it'll be okay because you can use these to practice all by yourself because we won't, you won't be able to do your two-person techniques anyway. So that occurred to me, so I thought I would share that with you. If you're brand new, this is called Wrapping the Pole, and we're, our arms are loose, completely loose. Our arms are not going to be loose like this for the rest of this session, and nor should they be. This is just like spaghetti arms, and we're driving our, the waist around, driving up from the ground through the legs, out the waist, out the shoulders. Very relaxing. This session today, hope you're in the mood for it. It's, it's a, a high energy session, very opening as opposed to closing, uh, energizing as opposed to calming because it occurred to me, let's do some shoulder rolls. It occurred to me that if there's a lot of couch sitting lately, we don't need to relax. When we were, before COVID, we were all running around maybe racing to get to class on time, and we're all keyed up. We needed to spend five or 10 minutes in the beginning of class just relaxing, getting a, just lowering the heart rate and everything like this, but you may be having a very low level of energy lately, and the last thing you need is to lower your energy level down below that. So let's, um, at least today, maybe do a couple of things that will lift our energy level. So let's go around the other way with the shoulders. Open this up. Every time you do, so we do this every week if you're new. And anything we do every week, instead of zoning out, you want to go deeper into it. Look for what else you can find in this movement. Can you articulate your shoulders more? Can you feel so many muscles and tendons attached to the shoulders, right? I can't even begin, I'm not even going to begin to name them because this is not an anatomy class, nor should it be. We want to think more holistically about the body. But the shoulder has got tons and tons, it's, it, must, it might be the most mobile joint in our body with the least support. So be careful with it, and you and so so all these things attached to it are very tense to protect it, right? So part of loosening your shoulders is reassuring your body that you're not going to harm them because your body is just trying to protect them from harm. This goes for yoga too. Half of our battles is with ourselves, just getting out of our own way. Okay, so let's move up to our neck. Look up and down. So if you're brand new to Tai Chi, I hate to say it, you should not be learning from a video. I'm glad you're here, but really, if you're brand, brand, brand new, a video is not the place to be, because you can't ask me questions. Um, and also, I don't even, mm, although I should say that, well, forget it. <laughs> if you're here, stick around, enjoy. Do the best you can, don't worry about it. Okay, so let's look straight ahead, tip the head from side to side. 
What I was going to say is I don't know that there's any class that's designed for beginners that really understands what it's like to be a beginner. Just about everything we're doing is just so foreign. And when I first started out in Tai Chi, I just didn't know what was going on. I was so confused most of the time. I didn't know my left hand from my right hand. And um, so um, I don't even know. It's so hard for me to remember back then too. It's been many, many years, but that's my, that should be my job is to remember that. And, um, but anyways, enough of that. But I try to, so just be gentle with yourself. Do what you can. So massage the neck and shoulders. These movements can only go so far. Sometimes you just got to reach in there and massage out the tension. Okay, great. So, um, so these videos will try to touch on a few things. A little smorgasbord, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And one of the things, after we've loosened up a little bit, is to do a little qigong and and then maybe explore one of the movements in our form, maybe break that down into a drill so you can do it more than once, and then we'll do our form, um, and then maybe something else that we can do, uh, that you can do um, at home to practice. So let's do uh, two Qigong movements. The first one is uh, reach up, um, or look up to gaze at the golden sun. So actually, we're not only gazing at the sun, but we're holding the sun. And this is to, uh, we're using this to warm up our spine and our upper body in, in this axis, what's called the uh, sagittal plane. Thank you very much. Shouting at the uh, YouTube screen. Okay, so, so my feet are parallel and I'm holding the sun and I just, um, Bring it up to here and just gaze at it. And then bring it back down. You can inhale up and exhale down. As always, our Qigong movements can be very small and understated, but I will tend to exaggerate them so you can see what's going on. And in my exaggerations, I hope I don't break any of the rules of Tai Chi, but if I do, forgive me. So I'm going to turn obliquely so that you can see a little bit more what's going on. And you don't need to turn obliquely, but if you did, it would be okay because we could both look at each other without craning our neck too much. Okay, so I could, I could, um, I could do a little bit more of this. Look up slightly, arch the back slightly. We don't do too much back arching in Tai Chi like we do in yoga, but some of some is going to be needed, especially if we're trying to warm up our spine. Okay, So we like to um, combine this with another movement called Feel the Sun Warm the Kidneys, and that would be to start here and then have the sun pass through you, come behind you, and I swear you can feel the sun warming your back. Okay, so we could just do this or we could combine the two. So inhale up, you could do it all in one breath or you could breathe naturally, evenly and basically forget about your breath and let your body breathe itself. As long as you don't hold your breath, that would be the only thing you shouldn't do. So now I'll exaggerate a little bit. I'm involving my legs now. <clears throat> You would think that I was involving my back, but my back doesn't do a whole lot in this. Whenever you draw your hips back, it, 
it, you allow the backs of the thighs and the, um, the gluteus to uh, take over for the back, right? You guys, we don't have to be moving in unison. You're at your house, you can do whatever you want. You can go slower or faster. I've always said that slower is better, but I will say that sometimes in order to feel the energy of the movement, you have to speed it up just to see what's going on in your body, and then you can slow it back down. So I'm going to maybe do one more. So I'm going to make my last one the biggest one yet. I'm not, and um, so one more after this. And this will be my last one. When I'm done, I'm just going to hold the sun in front of me, like when we started, and just uh, meditate. So now I can, I can really feel holding the sun now. So I feel like I've got something in my hands, whereas at first, when I hadn't built up very much chi, I couldn't really feel anything. love to stand here for a while but we have to move on. Let's um, take a sip of water if you want. And uh, So our spine is warmed up in the sagittal plane and then for the frontal plane and for, and for twisting, um, the transverse plane I believe they call it, we'll do a move from our form. So we will do um, our dragon pose which is the first real movement of the B side of the form. And if you remember, and we'll break this down before we do a drill. If you remember, we start our B side here, we step the right foot back, and then we step the left foot back, and the arms come up to one side, to our left, obviously, and um, my weight's on my left foot, and it's like I'm holding a big beach ball here, right? So, um, so what this is, I wish we had somebody who could demonstrate what this is, is, is um, there's a punch. First I step back, and now there's this punch coming in, and um, so I step back, and I come underneath and around this, this punch. So, I, so this is a principle called entwining. So if I just wanted to swat this punch away, I would just smack it away or continue to move backwards. It's not going to reach me anyway. It's too, I'm already too far, but it's assuming that a worst case scenario, right? So, um, so there's this entwining. Um, and just to explain the application even more, um, you might say a couple things. First of all, I am on my back leg and it's inadvisable to retreat to your back leg immediately. But let's say I, and also, I can't really entwine a punch. It's just, it's just in case, because a punch is retracted almost immediately, um, it's in case this punch was over committed and really um, came in tried to come in all the way, then let's say I'm st I stay on my front foot, but then I could come to my back foot, entwine, and then, and then step back again and do like rollback or something like this. But another scenario would be if this punch changes into a grab. Because a grab, I can entwine a grab and do other things with a grab because it stays there much longer, right? You can't really grab a punch if a person is punching correctly, right? So. I don't mean to turn this into a martial arts class because it's really not, but, but to know our application, we study the applications to know what the movement, why it is doing what it's doing. Otherwise, 
It's just arbitrary stuff that you're doing because I tell you to do it. I don't ever want it to be like that. So, so we came under, it's counterintuitive, under and around, and now we end up in uh, dragon pose. And to face the camera, look at how, so now I'm right in line with the camera. So the punch is here, so I came to here. So I went like, like that. So it wasn't like this, it was like that. And I'm still holding my center. I've turned to the side, but I'm holding my center. I'm not over there. That would be giving up my center, right? So I'm right in line with this. And then a couple other things. The reason I'm holding a ball is to keep this open. I want to open the upper dantian, open the shoulders, the chest, the throat. And I'm exaggerating. Yes, I'm exaggerating, right? But it feels really good. Okay, so we always do this on this side in our form. So I wanted to make a drill to allow you to do it on both sides. So, <clears throat> so here's another thing. In our form, there's a little pre thing where I step back and then come to here. But some people who do this form don't even do that, that first implied movement, and they just come right back to here, which you can do if you want. So in our drill, this is what we'll do. And let me put on my gloves so that we can get our hands keep our hands correct, uh, uh, using the right hands, proper hands. So the orange glove is always going to be on my right hand, and then the safety yellow will be on my left hand. Let's try this again. So we'll just do it like it's in the form for the first step, but after that it's just going to be single steps. So step this foot back. <clears throat> left foot back, arms come up to the left, okay, and then to turn this into a drill, feel how weird this feels doing it on the other side. If you're used to this movement only on the left side, this would be very strange. Half step back with the right foot, the arms come down. Half step back, another half step back with the right foot, and they come up on this side. Oh, it feels so weird to do it on this side. So half step back. With the left foot, another half step back with the left foot, and we're coming around. So let me see if I can exaggerate the entwining. I'm going to come off camera if I do it more than one more time. So half step back with the right foot, and the arms come down. So watch my left hand entwining more and entwining more as I come here. So um, shall I face the camera, and we'll go back and do this a few more times. Okay, so. So I'm not going to do it like in the form. I'm just immediately going to step. Well, I'll do it like in the form, just so, just to, so that we don't confuse ourselves. Okay, so right foot goes back, different uh, thing, and then left foot comes back up to here. Half step back in with the right foot. Right foot goes the rest of the way back up to there. This is the one that feels weird. We never do it this way. Back, let half step back, another half step back. Right foot half step back. Right foot steps back again. So we're going to do another movement that's vaguely similar to this, but not the same thing. So remember, one of my caveats in this class is that I'm going to show you a bunch of different things, each illustrating different principles, and they may seem contradictory, but they're not. Okay, so you can um, hit pause and go back and forth and up and down the hallway of your house and do whatever you want, or if you're ready to move on, that's fine too. So, um, Every week I want to show you a balance too, because you guys beg, beg me to, to help you with balance, right? And um, there is no one way to improve your balance, and doing your Tai Chi form improves your balance. But if you want to see something where we're standing on one leg, then I will show that to you. Just doing our stepping nice and slow and careful, that's what improves our balance. But if you want to do exaggerated balances, um, I'll give you what you want to do. So before we do a balance, do a standing uh, Qigong. Let's just do embrace the tree, and this will sink us down. 
so that we can really do our balance. Okay, so, so look at my elbows. Oh, I'll be oblique here so you can see what's going on. So the elbows are sunk, chest is hollow, back is rounded. My back is always rounded. I don't have to worry about that. Okay, sink the tailbone. So this is another case where <clears throat> subject and object are sort of smeared and blurred. I'm embracing a tree, but I'm also the tree. I'm, my roots go deep, deep into the ground, okay? I could probably, my tree could probably be a little straighter, not with tension. You can sink down as deeply as you want. Yes, your legs are tired, that's great. That means they're getting stronger. Okay, ready for a balance? Okay, good. We'll do Ride the Tiger from our form. So, if you've done Ride the Tiger in another form, ours is different. I'll show you a little bit of how it might have been done in other forms. You will see in other forms, um, both hands in front of you and the same hand and the same leg forward. Um, and uh, embrace, or I mean, ride the tiger may be sort of considered three movements, a series of three movements, but ours is not. And as I told you, the application determines how we do it. But in our form, ride the tiger comes at the very, very end. Therefore, we're not doing anything with it. Our partner is. 10 feet away from us, and, and we are not being attacked or responding to attack. So ours is purely, it's just, a, it's just a pose that we take. And you may have seen another version with the opposite hand, opposite foot forward of, of Ride the Tiger. Um, and ours is like that, but this arm is back. And then what do we do with our hands? Um, you've seen a lot of versions with the forward hand open, like, an, like a defensive or a strike, and then, and then the back hand closed. But I'm going to go, since we don't even have an application for this, I'm going to say, I'm going to take <coughs> our, our pose literally from the name of the movement. If I was to, if it was a tiger with a rope around its neck and I was to grasp the rope, that means that the front hand is closed, and I swing my leg over the tiger. The tiger takes off like a rocket, and I go flying back like this, and this is basically what it looks like in our form. We've been thrown through the air, and we land in this uh, shape. So this is my left foot, this is my right hand, this is my left hand, left hand open, right foot closed. Okay, so, um, and then as far as an application, you can just say it's any application where um, opposite hand and opposite foot are forward, right? So that gives you a lot of freedom. Okay, so let's, let's switch. So get ready to switch and then switch. So what I said last week, if comments were enabled on this video, we would have a thousand comments and they would all be saying, <coughs> what I said was, when you're doing a balance and you're switching from side to side, you may as well use your losing your balance as an opportunity to switch sides. And we really shouldn't, so I don't really want to fall down into uh, this pose, but look, I'm going to stick by what I said. I would rather see you say, oh, I'm getting a little shaky. I'm going to switch now. I'd rather see you do that then st struggling, struggling. This is just the worst thing you could do. Struggling, ah, right? I'd rather see you be more graceful. Ooh, I think I'm losing it. Okay, I'm gonna switch. I think I'm losing it, I'm gonna switch. Okay, and what I said last week, if you want, I think we were doing uh, Phoenix cools its wings. The next movement is rollback. So I happen to know this foot is going to go back there. So as I lose my balance, I may as well step back and just do my rollback because I'm heading back this way anyway. 
So I'm going to stand by what I said, but I'm not going to turn the comments on the video. You can just yell and scream all you like. So that's our balance for the day. Ride the tiger. Okay? If you learned it another way, good for you. How about um, our form? So have a sip of water if you like. Hit pause and, and um, drink a whole pot of tea if you want. Okay, so we'll do the A side. <clears throat> so I'll be facing you. I think I can. you can see me throughout because we don't do too many turns. Okay. Okay, relax completely. Feel free to, to hit pause on the video, stand in your resting posture. We could do a whole video just on the resting posture, but look at what you can at least see. My feet are parallel. My arms are making this sort of barn roof shape. That's not because I put them that way. It's because I went from here to, re to, to just relaxing down, okay? <laughs> and just hollow the chest and relax the shoulders. Feels so good. Okay. Oh, we should stand here for 10 minutes. No, we gotta get going. Let's do our form. Sink your weight into your right leg. Take your time. Slide the left foot up. So this movement here is not what we're reacting to in dragon pose. We're reacting to this movement. White snake darts out its tongue. That's what we're blocking, okay? So this could actually be a little higher, honestly. If you want to keep me honest, and then we come through to seven stars. Seven stars is implied. It's not actually listed in the young movements. Okay, carry hammer. And then oh, this is our white crane. I'm on my back leg. I switch my hands and do white ape. Swings through branches which is a shoulder strike, shifting left, but don't shift too far left. Shift back right. You can lower the arms because your partner's behind you. I pivoted, I step up and over. I shift right slightly, shift left slightly. Look how little I shift. I don't even exaggerate this for you guys because that would be teaching you really, really the wrong thing. Draw the bucket from the well. Look how empty my fist is. And then there's a little step around here for strike a tiger. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Strike a tiger. We're going to step up diagonally, strum the lute. Hope you can still see me. I'm going to jump back. There we go. You can still see my feet now. Okay. Here we're almost done. Shift back. Pivot around. Step in, step back. Inspect horse's mouth. Okay, and then here we go. This is what we were doing before. So, so um, there's a half step back with my right foot. My arms come out and down to the right, and then half step back with the left foot. And this is our dragon pose. Da 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 da. And so again, we happen to be on our back leg. Uh, another reason why we might be on our back leg because it's inadvisable to retreat too much, but we might be in our back leg so we could throw a kick. It's not in our form, but it's implied, right? So, so there's always this Im implication of, of, of being able to throw a kick, right? Um, so good, so that's the first eight movements. And um, if you wanted to continue on from here, um, well, let's see, we'll just do, the B side, and then um, maybe we'll do it from a different angle and see what goes on from what goes on from there. I think you'll be able to see every movement pretty well. So I'm going to do the B side facing this direction. There's only a couple of movements where I'll be facing away from you, and then we'll do it from the other side. That's a good idea. Okay, so I'm going to start over here. Okay, I'm back in my resting pose. shift into your left foot. Slide the right foot back on the toes. 
And as I shift back, I naturally turn right. That's okay, starts the waist moving. Um, I'm gonna turn my waist left. That brings the left foot back, and this brings me into dragon pose. Here we are again. I can't stay here though, I gotta do single whip. So the left hand turns into a uh, dragon's head or burby. Turning right, turn back left. That's our single whip. I'm gonna do strike a tiger right. So this time I have to step around and then strike a tiger. I'm all twisted up. The easiest way to untwist is continue turning left. That pulls the left foot in and back. It pulls the right hand back and down. So this movement's just called pull, great. And then this movement's called push, wonderful. Step up. And then this movement's a shoulder strike. Excellent, shifting right, shift back left. Hold this um, large hoop shape. It's not quite a ball. Step the left foot in and back. This is draw the bucket from the well. Okay, and then shift back. The hands come up in front of you. Left palm up, right palm down, pivoting my right foot. Sorry, I'll be back in a second. I'm facing away from you. Step in and back. Downward, push. Roll the left palm under. This is white snake, darts out its tongue. And this is where we choose to stop. Although, as I mentioned before, you could continue switching sides. Now you're on the A side, I'm doing seven stars, but I'll stop here, because when I'm facing you, it'll make more sense. So I'm gonna have another sip of water. Great, Let's, I'm gonna face this way, and then you'll be able to see me from a different angle, okay? So I believe you can, yeah, you can still see me. Okay, here we go, this is the B side again. Relax completely, hit pause and relax here. I'll just start, okay. Unpause, right foot back, left foot back. I'm a little stiff there because um, my hip really hurts. I, anyway, sorry about that. Let's do single whip. Let's step around and strike a tiger. All right. Pull and push, and then shoulder strike. Shift back into your left foot, hold that hoop, pivot the right foot, draw the bucket from the well. Shift back, hands up. Okay, now you can see me, I'll face you now. Okay, downward push, roll the left palm under. White snake darts out its tongue, okay? So let's say now I wanna go back to the A side. Why don't we just go through the A side as long as I started it? Seven stars. So the arm's coming up. That, that brings the left foot up nicely all by itself. The hand drops back to the hip. The right foot goes the rest of the way up. Carry hammer. All right, sing, uh, white crane. And I'll do this right. So in our version, we have to float this hand up and then drop this hand. We can't do them simultaneously, which looks much nicer, probably feels nicer too. But we have a reason for doing it our way. Shift left, shift right, pivot it around. So this gives you a chance to do the A side over again. Okay. So if you don't know what to do with your hands, always just hold a ball. <laughs> Shift right, bring the gong, and again, I'm going to step around and then strike a tiger, but you don't have to do that little step. Strum the loop, inspect horse's mouth. I just want to keep my feet over here so you can still see them. And then, um, so, out and down, half step back, out and up. I know I'm off the camera. So here we go, we're in, we're done. Okay, I knew I'd come out of frame. Okay, so if you want it to continue, back to the B side, single whip, remember? And then strike a tiger, and then pull and push, and then shoulder strike, right? And then draw the bucket from the well. So I'm showing you, going a little faster, 
because we've already done it slow, right? Um, and remember, you can do your form at home faster. If it makes more sense to you, or you're in a great mood, or you, you can do that as long as you try it slow. It feels different either way. Both, both ways are good. Um, obviously, Tai Chi is known for slow movements, but um, if it helps you, if it helps your body to understand it better, that's great. So um, we'll just do one more thing. So what about if um, what about if you don't know your form, or it's just too hard to practice it, or I want you to practice it. But what if you just want to get some exercise for your legs? What if you missed your morning walk? And now it's 100 degrees. So let's, we always have our circle walking, okay? And remember, I'm not going to do a clinic on circle walking right now. I'm just going to say that if you are taking a long time to take your steps, you've got to be doing something correctly, okay? So if you, so um, if you're, if you take really slow steps, this is good for your balance, and you've got to be doing something right. You can't go far wrong if you're taking forever to take your steps, which means your foot is hanging in the air, coming into contact with the floor. The step, the step up is taking a long time too. I suppose you could be dragging, or you could be sliding your feet. That still requires balance. Okay, still requires balance. This is very sloppy hands. This hand is usually down, this is up, but I'm just showing you what you can do um, just to get some good leg exercise and not get too crazy about this. Because if you wanted to be thinking, 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 then do your form, right? But if you want to just let your mind go, do your circle walking. The deeper you sink, the more your legs are going to be screaming, which is what you want, because you want you wanted to go out for a walk, but it got too hot, so now you're stuck in your house. I just change directions, change directions often, as often as you need. Okay. So remember, in that in the book that Ralph gave me, they say you can take five minutes to take one step. Yes, you heard me. Five minutes to take one step. Do I need to say that again? This is... <laughs> so, so that's not a lot of technique. That's not a lot of forms. It's just, it's just the simple act of stepping. And remember, stepping is not walking. I'm not telling you how to walk. I would never presume to tell you how to walk because We've been walking, we've been refining how we walk for a million years, and I'm not going to change that. But stepping is more arbitrary. Stepping you can train, and stepping you can do many different steps, right? There's many different steps. The human stride is a different thing. So I'm not telling you how to stride. And also, I'm not going to take five minutes to do one step. So let's do our final Qigong, lifting water. So notice how what we do in class affects how this feels. I hope that this has been a invigorating set for you and that your arms feel very light and floaty, that's a good indication that um, you've got a little more energy now than you did before. I'm just going to do one more of these. You guys hit pause and just do 10 or 20. But I'm just going to stop here and end with a proverb. How about, let's do one that's dedicated just to Tai Chi. This isn't a uh, life proverb. It could be, but this came from actually the study of Tai Chi. Okay, so I'm gonna read it. Oh, overcome by yielding, 
Be full by being empty, gain by having little, and be wary of having much. And thank you so much for joining us, me, and we'll be back together before very long, I promise you. But again, this video may survive and act to help you with your practice. Thank you so much, and we will see you.